Hey, listen to my podcast on RevolverPodcast.com. This is Julius Irving. Yeah, this is all new to me. I figured uh, since I really wasn't that familiar with it, on this side, being the uh, interviewer, and I have been on the other side of it, that it probably uh, would work. And uh, I would either really like it a lot or you test it. And uh, right now, I like it. I think, uh, you know, from a creative standpoint, trying to do justice to the, uh, to the guests, you know, let people become insiders in terms of some of their insights, and, uh, some of their experiences, you know, everybody's story is different. You know, we've set it up so that the interviews have been conversational, uh, more so than fixed agenda or trying to create shock reporting. You know, there's plenty of that out there, there's plenty of talking heads out there who thrive on being shock jocks. Uh, that's not who I am. So I try to you know, take it to a level uh, above the normal interview, but very much into the living room, sitting back, relaxed, and, and having a conversation with you know somebody who you either know or you want to know, and uh, hopefully who you admire and respect and who admires and respects you. So as an 18-year-old between my ages, 18 and 21 when I was in college. Uh, you know, I was a, a big follower of uh, Dr. King. You know, he was the one who, who my parents uh, thought was the proper uh, leader of the country, you know, during those years, during the uh, Kennedy years. You know, we had pictures of Dr. King in the house, we had pictures of John F. Kennedy. And uh, it meant something for those to be up there because that, uh, to us, meant that, you know, those were the individuals who were doing the most for our people. So as a, a black man, a black athlete, you know, it really wasn't you know, trying to run around like a chicken with his head cut off. It was a matter of staying the course in terms of, you know, my studies as a student athlete, uh, priority with my sport, which uh, got me there in the first place. And then, uh, you know, doing the things that would uh, keep me out of trouble. I think the times in which we live, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, not a recycling because it's never gone away. But, you know, I mean, I, I came up in the 60s and the 70s. There was a lot of activism during that time, uh, obviously, with the, uh, you know, the Olympic Games in, in 68. Uh, John Hines and Smith and, uh, you know, I had friends who were, who were at that Olympiad. I was too young to go, just getting out of high school. So that was that was impactful with the raised fists and you know uh, obviously all the civil unrest in the nation uh, during the uh, 60s, 70s, and even uh, moving towards the 80s, various assassinations of uh, public figures. I mean, people had to react to uh, a broken system, and I think we we see a lot of that now in the 2000s, teens. Uh, where a lot of people feel the system is, is broken and there's, there's room for repair. So, you know, it's a wake-up call in terms of uh, finding out who the leaders are and listening to what they have to say and, uh, you know, making a choice as to whether you want to, you know, follow that person or someone else who has a similar stance but different stance trying to arrive at the same same place. I'm a longtime uh, follower of uh, the Spurs. Uh, you know, they're the former ABA team that has been the most successful. So, so I pull for them except when they play 76ers. <laughs> and just about everybody else they play, I, I pull for them. You know, for a long time I always admired the way Tim Duncan played the game and approached it. and. Uh, Provided leadership uh, in a quiet way, uh, but a very forceful way. So, uh, so for that franchise to continue to be successful, that, that's that's important to me, and obviously for uh, the 76ers to 76ers. Speaking of 76ers, you know, to be resurgent in terms of you know getting back in the playoffs and getting back in the hunt. They got uh, multiple representatives here, you know, playing in the Rising Stars game, playing in the in the regular All-Star game. Uh, 
So, you know, the one-two punch, I think, with the Embiid and Simmons uh, has proven to be very special and worth watching. And, uh, you know, that's part of it. Part of it is fan appeal. The other part of it is getting W's versus losses. So uh, they're doing both. And, uh, and, you know, they're going to be much better than they were last year. And, you know, that's something fans always want to see. And, and obviously, uh, I guess that makes me a fan because I want to see it. Yeah, it was exciting to see the Eagles win. Yeah, I didn't go like Kevin Hart try to go up and get the trophy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But I was tempted to run on the field, believe me. <laughs> it was talked about in our suite. Are we going on the field? I said, nah, that's okay. <laughs>